Hey, Vinyl community, it's Tim with the University of Vinyl back today. Um, you know, every so often you just have to kind of take a breather, stop buying records for a day or two, <laughs> and enjoy your collection. So this is another video kind of in that vein where I'm just digging through some records that I really enjoy and they all have something in common. There's eight records I'm gonna to feature today. I never hear anyone talking about them in the vinyl community. Whether they're too slick, they're too commercial, they're too far out of left field, they've just been forgotten along with the sands of time. These are great albums that can be found out there in used bins and I think too many people flip over them looking for a holy grail and they forget how good or they don't know how good these albums actually are. Some of them are familiar, some of them are not so familiar. They're all fantastic and I recommend everyone either pulling it out of your collection and giving it a spin or trying to find one in the wild or bring it up on Discogs and uh, order one up. Give it a listen on Spotify or Apple Music beforehand maybe. But trust me, these, these albums all have many, many, many redeeming qualities and you will be rewarded every time you give them. One of my favorite artists is Marshall Crenshaw from Berkeley, Michigan, uh, later of New York City, and I think he's in upstate New York these days. This is his fourth album, Mary Jean and Nine Others. This was released in 1987. Um, I have a gold stamped promo, uh, but if you can find one of these with the sterling stamp in the dead wax, it's been mastered by Greg Kelby. I featured Greg Kelby on a previous mastering uh, video. He does a fantastic job uh, at Sterling Sound. And Marshall Crenshaw is a roots rock, country western, R&B singer. You can't pigeonhole Marshall Crenshaw. A lot of people are familiar with his 1982 debut album. And then they kind of stop there, in my opinion. They might not dig any further. If you loved that first album, or even the second album, Field Day, there's no reason why you shouldn't explore Mary Jean and, and uh, Nine Others. This is a power trio made up of uh, Marshall, of course, on lead guitar, uh, his brother Bob uh, playing drums, and Graham maybe. Uh, Maybe, Mabby, uh, M-A-B-Y, <laughs> um, played for years and years and years with Joe Jackson and uh, teamed up with the Crenshaw brothers on, on this great album. 
Uh, there are too many songs to mention as far as just fantastic. I will tell you that the previous album, Downtown, also a firm favorite of mine, was a little more... Uh, Crenshaw kind of varied his sound. There's some R&B, there's some blues, there's some country on that album. Um, guitars are toned a bit further in the mix. Uh, the Rock is back with this album from the lead-off song, This Is Easy. Uh, Mary Jean, the title track is a great song. Somebody Crying. Um, Wild Abandon, uh, They Never Will Know. This was produced by Don Dixon. Don Dixon did some work, of course, with R.E.M. Um, and he also had a few solo albums. Uh, this is something to look for. If you like power pop, this is a great album. 1987, Mary Jean and nine others. In 1991, Gordon Sumner put out another album, otherwise known as Sting. <laughs> I have in my hand the Soul Cages. This is a master disc, mastered edition by none other than Bob Ludwig. This thing sounds incredible. There's only two hits on this album, which is why I like it. Um, it's not an overplayed-to-death Sting album. Um, it, of course, had on side one all this time. And then the title track, The Soul Cages, is one of the hardest rocking Sting songs you will ever discover if you haven't heard it. Um, fantastic album. The musicianship on this thing is absolutely incredible. Uh, many of the songs have got kind of a somber feel to them um, but again the musicianship the mastering the quality of the songs uh, Sting is in incredible form on this thing he plays bass throughout of course um, in perfect voice the soul cages 1991 is an album to be discovered if you have not heard it before um, produced by the great Hugh Padgham, you know, Hugh Padgham, all that work with Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, XTC. There is the back cover. And that album, of course, was, uh, was on the A&M label. In 1977, we got the seventh album from the Jay Giles Band. Peter Wolf, one of the greatest front men of all time. This is a very, very cool album that I'm sure you've seen in the dollar bins and maybe you've skipped over it. On that really amazing looking yellow and black Atlantic label, Monkey Island is just an incredible mix of music. Uh, there is everything from a Louis Armstrong cover on this album to a nine-minute-plus fevered workout um, on the title track, Monkey Island. It starts with a, kind of a calypso beat and segues into incredible power chords and out-and-out -and -out rock and roll, the final two minutes of that song. There's the Philly blue-eyed soul of I'm Falling, uh, a great, great, great vocal by Peter Wolf. Um, has to be heard to be believed. The fourth song on side one is called Somebody. It features Stones-style heavy riffs um, with a very, very catchy tune. Again, great vocals uh, by Peter Wolf. Second song, side one, You're the Only One, a sweet love song. There is a little bit of everything on this thing, which is one of the reasons I love the album. Uh, you will not be bored. You will be amazed by the musicianship, uh, the Jay Giles band. Uh, this album did not do well commercially. Atlantic dropped them. They ended up signing, I believe, with EMI for the next album, Sanctuary, 1978. But this 
is a very, very cool band. A great album. Um, really good sound on this. I think this is a Sterling pressing as well. Check it out. Monkey Island. <laughs> This is Perspex Island by Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. I believe this was the fourth Egyptians album. It came out in 1991. It's not easy to find out there, uh, but I managed to find a copy about a year ago. One of my favorite Robin and the Egyptians albums, it's jam-packed with jangle pop um, that, you know, unmistakable influence from Roger McGuinn, of course, uh, the Beatles. Uh, there's plenty of Rickenbacker on here. There is also quite a bit of uh, Peter Buck, uh, was kind of an honorary member of the Egyptians for years. Michael Stipe is on this album, uh, vocal background as well on several songs. There are some great songs on here. Some of the best uh, that I, you know, that I love from Robin Hitchcock. Uh, so You Think You're In Love was uh, was a pretty big uh, alternative rock hit, college radio hit. Uh, Birds in Perspex is an amazing, gorgeous uh, love song. Ultra Unbelievable Love, another great, great song. Side 2. Uh, Child of the Universe, uh, She Doesn't Exist. Just some great, great, great writing from Robin Hitchcock. His idiosyncratic uh, vocal delivery. Um, this is well worth finding. Um, I think it's better than the previous album, Globe of Frogs. There is the back cover with Robin with that menacing look. Um, still quite a bit of brown hair before he has turned basically all white uh, of late. Uh, Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians, Perspex Island. When we talk about Graham Parker, many people only really remember the Graham Parker and the Rumor, the great uh, Squeezing Out Sparks album. Um, maybe they dip into the catalog you know, before that with Heat Treatment and Howlin' Wind. But if you take a look uh, at Graham Parker in the mid to late 1980s, he had a huge career resurgence, um, especially with that album from 1987, The Mona Lisa's Sister, uh, and then also from 1989 is Human Soul. This is a Fantastic album. Graham Parker is a great writer. Um, you know, he is, uh, along with Elvis Costello and Joe Jackson, kind of the trio of the angry young Brit um, guys that came, came out in the late 1970s. 
Graham Parker is is kind of underrated in my opinion. Uh, there is a gorgeous song on here. <laughs> When the world's asleep And there's no one in your arms Raindrops hit the window Like distant alarms You don't have to worry Hey girl, don't you cry my love beats adversity, baby It eats it alive, yeah Now I got a real human soul Don't tell me that I'm wrong Hey I'll be there on my love strong I'll be there on my love strong be there and my love strong, yeah. Ooh, when you have to work like a slave every day. Um, my love's strong, a ballad, uh, kind of a power pop ballad, really, really well done. Um, also a smattering of uh, all different kinds of music on here that Graham Parker is kind of known for. There's a couple reggae uh, inflected songs, uh, straight up rock and roll, uh, R&B, soul of course. Um, this is a really really good underrated album, Human Soul from 1989. Also from 1989, we got another album from the great Ricky Lee Jones. This time she decided to team up with none other than Walter Becker, who produced the album, played bass on one song. That was Flying Cowboys. I remember this being all over alternative rock radio. I was living in Chicago in 1989. And the great station XRT played lots of tracks off of this album. I think she appeared live at Park West uh, touring behind this album. Uh, this has got so many fantastic songs. Flying Cowboys, the title track. Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. Ghetto of My Mind is great. The Horses is fantastic. Ghost Train is an unbelievable, moody, atmospheric song. There's Ricky on the back cover. Um, you will uh, read the credits on this thing, and you'll see a lot of familiar faces from Becker's background with Steely Dan, of course. Roger Nichols was uh, an engineer on here. Um, there is also appearances from Dean Parks on guitar, Jim Keltner uh, on drums. Becker played bass on the title track, Flying Cowboys. This is a fantastic, atmospheric, moody, jazzy album. Uh, if, you have, if you know Ricky Lee Jones at all, uh, but you haven't heard this, you need to definitely go out and find this album. In 1982, Warren Zevon released his fifth album. That was The Envoy. There is a huge cast of characters, both in the songs and the personnel involved in the making of this album. Anyone from, uh, everyone from Wadi Wachtel, on guitar, Leland Sklar, of course, on bass, Don Henley on background vocals, Lindsey Buckingham on background vocals. The minor hit off this album was Ain't That Pretty At All, but there are, again, some, some great, great, great songs. You know, Warren Zevon, incredible songwriting. Jesus Mentioned is just... Zevon uh, and an acoustic guitar it is a breathtaking song. Looking for the next best thing is a nice, upbeat, power pop, optimistic song. 
Um, Never Too Late for Love, another great, another great tune. Uh, the Overdraft and the Envoy, political undertones, great, great, great music. Um, you know, incredibly, Asylum dropped Zevon after this album. Uh, there is the back cover. And um, he eventually re-signed. I'm drawing a blank on who he re-signed with, but he, of course he got picked up by somebody else. But Asylum was not happy with the commercial outcome of the album, and he ended up being dropped. But uh, co-produced by Greg Ladani, Wadi Wachtel, and Warren Zevon. Last but not least, I have talked about this album, I think, in another video. It's been a while, though, and I keep coming back to it. It's one of my favorites. It's from 1989, Joe Jackson, Blaze of Glory. This is an emotional album. Uh, you know, Joe Jackson's voice and delivery, he can be very, very dramatic when he needs to be, and... Um, the musicianship on this thing is amazing. Uh, this was on a &M. There is kind of a cool shot of all of the personnel involved on the inner sleeve. All of the songs and lyrics are on that original inner sleeve as well. Mastered at Masterdisc by Bob Ludwig. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. Um, it's kind of a look back to Jackson's childhood. Um, and also kind of, uh, you know, dealing with rock stardom, kind of a, kind of a concept album. Uh, there are some incredible songs on here, including Tomorrow's World, um, Down to London, that nostalgic, got, Down to London's got that nostalgic feel, 19 Forever, uh, Rant and Rave, Evil Empire, and the human touch, uh, where a lot of the emotion comes into play. Uh, that is the last album I'm going to point out today. There's the back cover. 1989, Joe Jackson, Blaze of Glory. That's it for today. That was another, I call it kind of reading, reading the stacks, where... Um, you know what spurned on this this uh, video? I was trying to do some more organization and alphabetizing, trying to get records off of the ground into some shelves and um, managed to kind of happen across that Jay Giles album, Monkey Island, uh, and kind of put that on a turntable. I hadn't heard that album in two years. And, and that's the beauty of record collecting. We are building up a library of emotional, uplifting, whatever you need in your life. Uh, it's all in your record collection. You can go ahead and pull out a few albums. You can lift your mood. You can remember times uh, in the past. Um, these are all touchstones. And I am really, really carrying this to the 99th degree today. Anyway, um, that's today's video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, if you have other kind of uh, forgotten albums that nobody talks about anymore or nobody ever mentions, maybe mention a few of those in the comments. I love reading and responding and interacting. Um, as always, thanks again. If you like the video, if you have not subscribed yet, come on. Um, every uh, like, every subscription helps as far as lifting the channel up with the ever mysterious YouTube algorithms. Thanks again and um, wishing everyone a great upcoming weekend.